St. John of Damascus was healed by the miraculous power of the Mother of God. She actually performed surgery on his right hand. Most of you, if you read the Lives of the Saints, you may remember that St. John lived around the 8th century and he did not live in the Byzantine Empire at the time. Damascus was a caliphate, meaning the Arabs began to come northern and northern and begin to take territories from the great Byzantine Empire. And St. John's father was one of the advisors of the caliph, Abdel Malek. This caliph lived at 685 to 705. And St. John was a great Orthodox. He was taught by a monk. His father was very pious, and he hired this monk who came from Italy, Orthodox monk, we're talking about before the schism. And this monk stayed in his home and taught you know, all the wisdom of those times to St. John, but especially the divine wisdom. So at the time, around 726, Leo the Savian, he came up with the first decree against the holy icons. He began to teach that, and actually demand that icons are taken away from the churches. The second decree at 730, at that time, he exiled the patriarch of Constantinople, Hermann. And St. John was moved by the zeal of Elijah. And he was quite a few hundred miles away. So he began to use his pen. And he was writing such powerful articles that he was destroying the heretical iconoclasts. And he was strengthening the Christians all over the empire, but especially in Constantinople. So in order to take revenge, Leo the Savrian took one of the letters of St. John, he studied his writing character, and he forged, he forged a letter, and he sent it to his king, Abdel Malek slandering him that he is talking bad against you and he wants me to come and attack you so I can free him from you. This caliph, when he saw this letter, he felt so betrayed and he was overtaken by such anger that he sent his soldiers to grab St. John, they brought him in, and before St. John had any opportunity to explain himself, he demanded that they would cut his right hand off. Those were the laws at the time. No human rights. So St. John, in great pain, physically and more so emotionally, and spiritually, because now how was he going to write? Towards the evening, he sent some ambassadors to the caliph to ask for his hand. Please give me my hand now. Well, they had hanged his hand from the center of the city so everybody would see it. So they gave him his hand back because the anger of uh, the king had subsided. And St. John at that point, he takes his hand and he goes in his chapel. He had a chapel in his private home and he had an icon of the Theotokos. And he began to pray in poetry. He was so gifted that the words were coming out poetically in rhyme. 
something to the effect that for the holy icons I did this, holy mother of God. You know what drove Leo the Savrian crazy. Please be hasteful and connect my hand so I will use it for the glory of you, of your son so I can write melodies. Please, you have the power to do this. His prayer was so fervent that after he dozed off a little bit, he fell asleep. He saw in a dream the most holy Theotokos to speak to him out of her icon. Her icon became alive and she told him, your prayer has been heard. Your hand is healed. Go now and write for the glory of God. And then again in poetic symmetry he began to thank the Lord from the bottom of his heart and then he went back to the caliph and his hand was beautifully connected except you could see the stitches. <laughs> you could see the ring all around so the miracle could be displayed for the rest of his life. Right after that, St. John, although he was given very, very many gifts and many apologies from the caliph, he decided to sell everything and follow the rest of the virgins that follow the Theotokos. And he went to the monastery of St. Sava in Jerusalem and he became a simple monk from a prince down to a pauper. But these are the magnificent things of our faith.